Welcome, I'm Dr. Bertola Meshko, the medical futurist. You know I love science fiction, but today I have a bone to pick. Science fiction helps us emotionally prepare for the future. It makes you think about futuristic scenarios, about uh, the use of technologies and ethical issues that you normally wouldn't think about. And while stories like these can portray things like space travel, the future of energy and social changes inspiringly well, it usually has a hard time doing the same with the future of healthcare. So let's take a look at how it is misrepresented in fiction. Spoilers ahead. The ultimate all-in-one medical device is one of those unrealistically far-fetched ideas that we usually identify with the futuristic sci-fi version of healthcare. It's such a popular idea that even today people have tried to recreate it and the Tricoder XPRIZE challenge even offered $7 million for anyone who can make it happen. But it's fundamentally a mistaken tool. Something that would push doctors to the sideline. In Star Trek, Dr. McCoy's Tricoder can analyze, diagnose and sometimes even treat patients. Dr. McCoy's role in this is almost reduced to just someone who turns the device on and off. In reality, practicing medicine is not a linear process. It's not like if I can measure every data about you, I can treat you right away. It simply, and unfortunately, doesn't work that way. So the idea of such an all-in-one medical tricoder is not only an unrealistic goal, but it would push doctors to a passive role. And this is definitely not what the future holds. The self-operating robot in Prometheus is a classic example when we talk about healthcare in science fiction. But once again, it's unrealistic. In some capacity, we already have autonomous surgical robots, but they can never get as advanced as in Prometheus, nor should they. As every human body and medical case is different, a robot will never be able to pull off as complex tasks as the one in the movie because it won't even recognize the subtle differences between patients. At some capacity, even the most advanced surgical robots will need the involvement of their human counterparts. Or from the other perspective, surgical robots will always be designed to aid what human surgeons can do. This is the winning team. The all-around cancer screener is a good shorthand depiction for how we hope we will handle chronic diseases in the future. Unfortunately, in this form, it's not a viable concept. In Elysium, people who lay down in one of those med bays get screened for cancer cells and then get those malfunctioning cells destroyed in a matter of seconds to have a seemingly healthy 0% of them. It's an unbelievably far-fetched idea given that cancer cells are part of living and we never have 0% of them. That's simply not how the human body works. And to, once again, take the patient out of the equation, to think we can lay back and passively solve everything with a scanner or a tanning bed like that, that's unfortunately unrealistic in medical and biological terms too. Gotoko is one of my favorite films, and in terms of story and character, it's close to being impeccable. But in terms of science, boy, it drops the ball. So in the video, you might have realized already what's wrong with the movie. While it's a great visual motif, a piece of hair doesn't contain any DNA. Only the root, the hair bulb does. And if you know this fact, then the whole movie is spoiled. Sorry to pull a Neil Tyson on you, but that's true. And DNA itself doesn't work the way it does in the film either. While designer babies are going to be a real trend in the future, DNA is more of a blueprint of how things should be and how things might go than rules that are set in stone. The best examples are identical twins, who start with the same DNA, but they can look and be very different from each other. That's due to how much other factors start to kick in as we grow up. And in a weird way, all this goes back to how sci-fi stories depict us in a passive role when it comes to our health. In Gotaka, the main scientific concept is that our fate is already written in our DNA. And I usually say, genetics only load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. Nothing is set in stone when it comes to DNA.
One of the most fascinating movies I've ever seen is The Fifth Element. I loved the scene as a kid where they recreate Lilu's character from a mere cut of hand. Now, 3D printing has taken the world by storm and of course it's going to have a role in healthcare, but I hate to say it, it's never going to work like that. We will not be able to print a body, not even entire organs. What we can do is to print tissues and to create environments where tissue can grow, which is frankly just as amazing as the method depicted in a film, but a lot less spectacular. Eternal sunshine of a spotless mind. While an amazing movie and a fantastic concept is not scientifically sound at all. We won't be able to just sit in a chair with a device around our head and have our memories manipulated like that. Elon Musk's Neuralink comes the closest to manipulating our brains like that, but even the company's researchers are super careful not to get our hopes up that he could ever be able to do something like this. One of the craziest yet widely mainstream ideas in science fiction is that we can only use a fraction of our brain's full capacity. This is what we in the scientific community call pure urban legend. Even from an evolutionary point of view, it doesn't make any sense. Simply, we wouldn't have it if we didn't use it. Of course, we do have an untapped capacity, but you can't put a number and a percentage on it. And even if you do, it's definitely not 90% of our brain that's dormant. And finally, the human-robot relationship. In some ways, this is a major part of most science fiction stories, and in most cases I'm pretty satisfied with how they do it. There is one angle though that I can never wrap my head around. It's the home care robot. If we are so advanced, like in the case of the TV show Humans, that we can create robots that are almost indistinguishable from humans, how can we still lack in the digital health revolution? We would have nanorobots working in the bloodstream of patients, medical drones delivering equipment, and remote care in every tiny part of the world way before we get to such human-like robots. So as you can see, that one of the underlying themes in science fiction's portrayal of healthcare's future is that the patient is passive and the doctor is almost non-existent. But the reality points towards the opposite. You are going to be an empowered patient you will have access to your health data and you are going to make decisions in partnership with your doctor. You are going to be the point of care. And for physicians, they will not be reduced to subservient people who will turn on and off the machines that will do the art of medicine for them. It's the opposite. They will only have a lot more advanced tools at their disposal to revolutionize care. So the next time you read a science fiction book or watch a science fiction movie, don't let yourself be fooled by these false ideas, because the real story will be about you. If there are science fiction movies or books I've missed here, please share those in the comment section. And if you like this video, please subscribe below.